go to two places in Scripture. I pray you have your Bible with you or electronic device, something you have the Word in your hand. There's something about putting it on the screen, and I'm not putting you down if you don't, but, but dependency on the screen. Uh, you need to either turn a page or have it to where you can get to it, navigate the Word. Uh, it's imperative you do that, especially in the age we're living in. You never know where things may take shut off. You have to go back to the book. That would be a shame, wouldn't it? Revelation chapter 18, go there, verse 20. And then also go ahead and mark up uh, Matthew 18, verse 19. Get those two areas ready. I want to speak to you about a sound. I released the last two weeks services in here, uh, sermons. God has just directly. All right. That's a sound. Somebody say a sound. How many know there's good sounds and bad sounds? Don't look at your neighbor when you say that. I want you to stand with me when you get them scriptures ready. Revelation chapter 18. Thank you, guys. Uh, and then also we have children in here, and I want them in here. They're not bothering me at all, so don't worry about your children. Um, if they, you can run to the altar and jump with them. I don't care. This is the fourth Sunday. I really like it when the workers do show up during this time. Now, I got some that will stay out of church because uh, there's kids in here, and, and shame on them, to be honest with you, because... Uh, uh, what they're used to do is watching the internet where they block out kids crying and all they get them dynamic services They don't hear kids cry. They do trust me, and I want them in here I want my babies in here because I'm warring for their soul I'm telling you right now and we support our children's ministries heavily But my workers need to be in here and your kids need to be able to come in and set in the fire It's not easy for them to set in there. They get cranky and they get the uh, teenagers start nodding off and because they didn't go to bed last night and things of that nature, but we were all there at one time. But at least they're here, and they, it will saturate. I promise you. You look at me. I promise you it will stick a hold of them. It does. And we have to stay very focused. But you see, as adults and those who worship, it's our responsibility. What sound we release is what they'll pick up on. Sound's very important in Scripture. And I want to go there uh, the, today. And I've been releasing for the last two weeks. I talked about the other giants, which Goliath had brothers. I taught you that. And that he shows up, especially for addictions. You may defeat that a spirit of addiction, that giant, but along comes a brother. And there comes brothers. And we have to learn how to deal with his brothers also through the blood of Jesus. I want to read you about a Babylonian spirit that in Scripture is very important because it repeats Babylon in Revelation. It's also uh, destroyed in the New Old Testament when the tower went down. But that spirit is alive and it seems to drift all the way in to the book of Revelation. The Bible says in 18... Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So God begins to move with the Spirit. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. Now some equate that to America. Some equate it to different things when they travel it out and they study it out. I'm just telling you it's a spirit of Babylon in America and around the world. And I'll tell you why. And shall be found no more at her. And the voice of the harpers and the musicians and the pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all. Now, praise and worship that comes out of that spirit is, is put to death. It says, and no craftsman or whatever, so ever he, uh, craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall know. So commerce and everything that's attributed to that spirit is, is put to death. And the light of a candle shall shine no more. Talking about the presence of Jesus in the church. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Why? For thy merchants. That word merchants, circle it, is translated out uh, business people. Businessmen or high people or in charge of finances. Were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries, because it's attributed to the greed and the finances, that word sorcery is translated pharmakia. And you can circle that because it talks about pharmakia, where you get pharmacy and things of that nature, drugs, uh, demonically use of, controlling spirit. Were all nations deceived. So it wasn't just one, it's the world was deceived by the finance people, the business people of high finance of the world, and also those who deal in sorceries or drugs or demonic drug control. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and all that were slain upon the earth. Father, in the name of Jesus, enlighten us in your word as we're coming against the spirit 
in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. You may be seated. I've preached this and I've uh, released it to some pastors from many places and they're writing sermons today. Some of them are teaching on the Babylonian spirits invaded their church and all. They picked this up. God gave this to me, and I was in conference with many of them, and they just began, just began to explode. They never saw this as some of the things that are in here. And to be honest with you, I hadn't until recently as I began dealing with Goliath and his brothers and the importance of the sound in the church, the sound of heaven. And I want to just teach you something this morning about a sound. And, I'm, and we, we hear a lot of preaching on it. We've all been into it. We all know that. But it's just a revelation. I'm directing this sound to the Babylonian spirit. There is a Babylonian spirit that has infiltrated the sounds of the churches. The church sound is not godly. It's horizontal and it's fleshly. There is a sound in many churches today and many believers, uh, maybe even here your light will become on, that you begin to see that your sound is not very vertical, it's very fleshly. Look at me. You can control a flesh sound. You can't control a vertical sound. That sound comes straight from the throne of God. And when God's sound comes in, it ushers in the presence. Listen to me. You'll never have the true fire of the Holy Spirit until first you have the sound from heaven. The sound comes, the fire comes. David understood that when he was in war, and all of a sudden he'd done a fleshly war, and he battled, he beat the enemy in the valley of Rephidim, and they'd done good in the flesh. They knew how to war. They used all their talents. But what happened was the enemy was coming back. And when the enemy was coming back, God said, you can't fight like you did before, boys. You're going to have to do that supernaturally. You need the sound of heaven in your midst. And the sound of heaven was go over and wait, and you'll hear a sound. And when you hear the mulberry trees or the trees begin to move, when you hear the wind in those trees, then and only in do you move forth. Why? Because the sound comes before the fire. Why people are not getting delivered in the churches today, why some of us are not getting over our hurts, habits, and hang-ups is because we're afraid of the wind and we're afraid of the fire. Why? Because you can't control either one of them. When the wind of heaven blows in and the fire of God falls, all flesh is put in its place and it becomes dependent and truth on the word. Some of you today are holding on to things that you're trying to deal with in a horizontal position. You're trying to peel it out, cancel it out. You're trying to stop it. You're trying to control it. And all that does is stirs up frustration, fear, and anger, and, and, and all of a sudden chaos steps in your life. What you need to do is get rid of that foolishness of church at the, at the horizontal level, kumbaya, Lord, kumbaya, and start doing this very vertical. And when you get very vertical, the sound of heaven hits your midst and the fire comes in. And when God's fire comes, it's not just always jumping and shouting. It's purging the sin out of our lives. Fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. I come, I can't baptize you uh, like water. John, he, there's one coming that I can't even untie his shoes. Why? He's going to come baptize you in what? Holy Ghost and fire. Why? He's going to purge things. Fire will first purge you before he get, you begin to see the, the transformation. We need transformation in our lives. We need to fire God in our lives. And the only way we do that is get the sound in our midst. That's why the enemy keeps the, the sound of heaven out of your midst. Now go to 18, Matthew chapter 18. Are you with me for a moment? I won't go long because we've got our babies. I know that. But I want to hit hard and fast. This has been on me, man. I'm telling you, it's been on me like a, like a good shirt, man. It fits so good, you don't want to take it off. You know one of them shirts that you wear since you was in high school? You know, some of you guys got them chests used to be up here, but now it's down here and you still wear the shirt. Or the, you know what I'm saying? You look like an old one. Never mind, never mind. Matthew 18, verse 19, amplified. Hey, man, Whew, feel bad in here. Again, I tell you, somebody say, repeat. See, he's getting ready to say, again, I'm telling you again. Again, I tell you, if dos, if two of you on earth, somebody say on earth, circle that word agree, agree, say agree. That word agree in the Greek talks about being a harmonic. It talks about harmonizing together. It's talking about making a symphony together. So I tell you again, I'm repeating this again to you guys, you're not getting it, that on this earth, you need to harmonize together. You need to be symphonic together. Why? He said about whatever. Now, I'm going to give you a Greek translation. Are you ready? It's really deep. It's theological on the whatever. You know what whatever means in the Greek? It means anything and everything. That's what it means. So here's what he's telling you. I'm telling you again. I'm repeating this, boys, because you didn't get it. you got to get a hold of this. He says, if only two of you guys begin to harmonize together, begin to bring a symphony together, 
begin to agree on anything in your midst. Now, when he talked about everything and anything, he's talking about those who know God, not sinners, that know the Word of God and begin to, uh, begin to minister in that realm. Are you following me? They ask, and it will come to pass, and he done for them by my Father in his name. That word, agree, is a sound from heaven. First of all, there is a symbolic sound that comes in. It's harmonic. Why? It's a spirit of agreement. Let me tell you something right now. Foolishness has to leave the churches. Foolishness has to leave the, the church and, and the body of Christ. What that foolishness is, is you're never going to agree if I order pepperoni pizza in here somebody's going to be mad and they're going to want cheese. Somebody's going to be mad because they're lactose intolerant so they can't have cheese. Some of you want white sauce instead of marinara sauce. Some of you want flat, big, thick bread and some of you want thin. Some of you even take for God's sakes and make, try to make a uh, 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 pizza crust out of cauliflower. That's as bad as peas. Somebody will try to make it out of peas. What he says here is, I, I want you to agree on, I'm not talking about it. He says, guys, you got to get this because they're guys. Who's going to be sitting next to you in heaven? Who's going to do all this stuff? Like Who's going to be the most glory? No, 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 stop. He says, I want you to agree. And what I want you to learn to do is you're not going to agree on horizontal things. There's no way you're going to agree if Biden should be president or if Trump should be president. No way you're ever going to agree on that. There's no way in my house that you're ever going to agree whether you get a vaccine or you don't get a vaccine. There's no way whether you get three booster shots or not. No way you're ever going to agree on that. You, you, well, as a matter of fact, if you don't learn to agree only on the word and love each other on the word, you're going to fight. It's going to bring chaos, so I'm going to bring a division. I'm going to bring a division because some of you are Trumpers and some of you are, are Bideners. I'm going to bring a division because some of you have had a shot, some of you ain't. Let me tell you what you need to learn. You need to learn to kick the devil out, get the sound of heaven in, and he says, I'm telling you, this is what you agree on. When you agree on these things, you'll learn to disagree on things that have nothing to do with heaven. And I'm telling you, presidents have nothing to do with heaven. <gasps> Let me tell you what my Bible tells me. If you read it, you'll understand. It says that earth is the footstool of my Lord. It says that the government on his shoulders rests. And it tells me that God is in control. <laughs> God is in control over the ballot box. He's in control who sets over nations. How many of you can agree with that? Come on, come on. Father, I break this curse that's come into the American churches. And they're arguing and hurting people and splitting over foolish politics and over vaccines. That shows me that that's from the pits of hell. It shows me it brings chaos instead of peace. It shows me that we have churches full of malnourished, immature Christians trying to lead people out of hell, but they're so consumed in their self and their comfort that nobody's getting saved and nobody's getting delivered, and they're running around with a religious babble instead of stepping into the presence of the Father because sound always comes before the fire, give him praise in this house. Now see, I lost half of you already. And what I just preached is not a popular message. I was, watching, uh, I was just reading a, a, a piece out of the New York uh, Post. And how many know the, the Washington Post? How many know they know everything? The Washington Post put this uh, letter out, and this is how they, the, how they headlight it. In a post-Trump world, these pastors are ditching the evangelical label for something new. Now, that's a, that's a hook because everybody's touchy about, about politics. This letter, to uh, this report from Washington Post has nothing to do with that. You know what it has to do with? It's a bunch of preachers that got together in Fort Wayne, Indiana. You know why they're after Fort Wayne, Indiana? Why they picked out of the United States, Mary, why they picked Fort Wayne? Why? Because the Crescent Pregnancy Center tells us that the, they, they know, the abortionists know, that if they can change the heart of Indiana, they can, they can change the heart of the nation. That's what they're telling them. Because there's such a strong heart for life in Indiana that they know that. You know why? The evangelicals that are disenfranchised, they've been fired from their churches. This is what this article tells us. They've been fired from their churches. You know why? Because they got liberal in their pulpits. Now, when I'm talking about liberal, I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about sin. But see, they don't know about sin because you're listening to carnal-minded people. And they're trying to get you to read their paper. But what's happened is it exposed the spirit. 
So there's about 100 people out of the nation that come from some of the mega churches that got fired. You know why? Because they started preaching a liberal gospel. And they think that the, that the gospel should be open for discussion. You know who's trying to lead you into the presence of God in these evangelical, non-denominational churches? They're starting their own churches. Reformed, you know who they are? Lesbians, gays, transgenders. Are you listening to me today? That's the people that's in this article, but they smoothed it over. You know why? Because church folk that love Jesus are so divided that you can draw them in. If you bust out Trump or Biden, they'll read it and they'll tie it to God. God forgive us today when we argue on the horizontal level instead of fighting the devil in a vertical attitude. Father, send your fire, send your sound, and let the church grow up because we're at war for not only our country, for the world. We have teenagers and we got babies that we need to break the confusing spirit off of them and let them walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Somebody praise him this morning. Amen. Hey, how long do I got to tell you, boys? How long do I got to tell you that on this earth you're supposed to make harmony together? You're supposed to symphony, be a symphony. How many do you know that whatever, the things that come at you, there's answers for everything? He's the Alpha and the Omega. Every answer we need, all the guidance we need is right here in Scripture. We don't need another book. We don't need another hook. We don't need another this and that. What we need is a vertical presence of the Lord. Get rid of our flesh. Let God come in, and you'll see lives running to the altars of transformation because there's no hope out there. Listen to me. They're dying whether they take the shot or not. People are dying full vaccinated. They're dying not vaccinated. You know why? Because God's saying, I got news for y'all. You better learn that I am the God who healeth thee. You better have your faith in me. You better have your faith in me. You better run to me before you run to any fix that the horizontal world has for you. You better learn to trust in me. Somebody give him praise because he is God El Shaddai. The center of the church is not supposed to be the pulpit. The center of the church is supposed to be the good news gospel. No matter what the pulpit is, whoever's behind it, it's not how fancy they are, how tight the jeans are, skinny jeans, short jeans, no jeans, suit, tie, has nothing to do with the pulpit. What has to be reduced to the center of the church must be the very nucleus, must be the gospel, it must be the good news of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we're anointed to preach the good news, the gospel news. When you begin to release the sound of the gospel, uh, the foolishness of preaching, they say, when you release the word of God, all of a sudden God's throne room is set up. Why? Because prayer becomes the agreement level. Let me tell you something right now. When on earth we agree, agreement is a prayer room by the way. When you pray agreement begins to unfold and among God's children, kingdom reality sets in their midst. When we begin to pray and like to pray there's a manifestation of God's presence and out of prayer burrs worship and praise. Worship praise does not come before it comes after. And see, the American church has lost that. Pump me up. Jack me up. I got to hear the latest song. No. You're coming in here and you haven't been in the presence of the Father. You're not praying. You're wanting somebody to pump you up, jizz you up. And what happens with the horizontal attitude is that we become a concert instead of a symphony. I'm desperate, Lord. Lord, I need a healing and Lord, I'm desperate. I need more of you. And Lord, I, I really need you to touch me today. Father, would you just give me confirmation when I walk in to the corporate anointing? Because, Father, I'm being obedient because your word says I'm not to forsake this. Shame on you who forsakes the assembly. We're not to forsake the assembly. We're to come together. We're to come to the church whether you like it or not. We're to come to the body of Christ whether you like it or not. We're to come together. Why? So the corporate symphony activates and in corporate symphony activates the sound of heaven comes in and the fire of the holy spirit comes in and together we get transformed and what takes place is can you believe what happened to sister billy bob over there man you should have seen what happened her hair pins flew out of her hair she got oh so undignified but you know what happened she got delivered come on somebody she got delivered it's a word nobody wants to hear anymore we need delivered we need to be delivered of ourselves sometimes because really if we want to be honest when we come in here it's all about me it's all about my come on instead of it's all about you 
And so we carry that pettiness in, and then all of a sudden, when it's all about us, all of a sudden, we're very vulnerable to be offended and hurt. But when we come in here, and we've already said it in the prayer room, and we've been in agreement, we're tied with the mind of Christ in the church, all of a sudden, the glory comes in, and people get set free. Somebody give him a shout of glory in here this morning. You know what that's called? What happens is that's the flash point. Prayer is the ignition point. And might I remind you, if you're not a prayer warrior, you're not walking in the ghost that I know. You need to be a prayer warrior. You need to be in prayer. You need to be not only in individual prayer. You need to be a part of corporate prayer. You need to come in. You need to pray. You need to get in prayer groups. You need to be a part of that. Because let me tell you something, honey. That is the ignition point. When you pray, all of a sudden horizontal things become exposed and kingdom gathered saints come together and there's an activation response that takes place. When the center of the church is the gospel, heaven's sound comes in. Do you not read the book of Acts? Do you not understand that the book of Acts was not just fire and not just tongues, but it began first and initiated, and the initial point was prayer. When they went to pray because they were obedient, God said pray. Why? Because I'm going to send you a comforter. They knew something was coming. How many of you have an expectancy? Do you not know that Jesus is about to call his church home? Have you not come in here expectancy knowing that when God shows up, sin gets delivered? All of a sudden we begin to see when God shows up, joy unspeakable comes in. Do you not know that when you come into the courts with thanksgiving on your heart and begin to give him praise. It's just not an activation of the flesh. When you praise him, you're putting him first in everything that's going on in your life. God, I put you first. God, I need help today. Need a healing in my body. Need a healing in my marriage. My babies need to come to the Lord. Lord, I can't do it. I'll wear myself out. I bind anxiety that tries to set on me. Depression that tries to set on me because I am vertical. I'm not vertical. I'm horizontal, so turn it up, turn it up, and blow in my life, Lord. Somebody shout in this house. We need a fire sound. We need the fire sound, man. And no, I ain't drinking no juice, so you need to listen to me today, you morons. They know who I'm talking about. Them's the ones that need Jesus more than me. I'm just kidding you. What I'm telling you this morning is I want your undivided attention because this is important. Only revival from heaven will set in our midst when we quit our petty disagreements and start agreeing on the word of God. Because i got news for you. Presidential cycle will change. Economy will change. But God never changes. God never changes. I'm tired of seeing people die and go to hell. Oh, it got quiet in here because in most churches, nobody goes to hell. That's in their theology. I promise you, if you die away from God, you're not going to go to heaven. Lift your hands right now. Father, give us a passion for the lost. Father God, there is a reality that, Lord God, there are people we know and people around us that leave this earth and they need to know Jesus. Father, we're not saviors. We can't save anyone. But, Lord God, what we can do is pray the presence in. What we can do is pray the power in. And what we can do when we assemble together is we assemble in your greatness, not in our flesh. Father God, I'm praying you mend broken fences now. And, Father God, I pray that you bring church folk together to love one another because Jesus reminded them again, how must, many times do I need to tell you, again I say to you, the whatsoever agreement has to set in the midst. It's the word. I believe the word. I release the word. Somebody give him praise in this house right now. Now, Matthew 18 and 19 says, again, I tell you, if two of you on this earth agree, that word agree we know is breaks out to be symphono, symphonics, Harmon uh, harmonics, it means to be an accord, it means to be uh, stooped in the agreement factor, it means to match, it means to fit in, it means that we sound the same. And hell hates it when God's people begin to sound the same. Why? It's a musical term, like it or not. This word agree is a musical term. If the church assembles, God's people come together, they're supposed to sound like something. They're to release an upper room atmosphere. They're to release a harmonic sound. Let me tell you something right now. It's not that this musical instrument should tell you and drive your worship. You are an instrument in yourself. Pastor, I can't sing. Yes, you can. 
Pastor, I can't dance. Yes, you can. It's part of you. Do you understand that your voice has vocal cords? Your voice is an instrument. And what, what strums that is wind. It's the breath. But you can't make your vocal cords vibrate this way. It vibrates when you exhale. Why? Because from your belly is supposed to be released what? Rivers of what? Jesus is the living word of God. Jesus is the voice of God. Jesus is the sound from heaven. And all of a sudden we believe something knowing that we are vessels. We are instruments. So your voice needs to sing his praises. It doesn't matter whether it makes anybody around you feel good. It's you're doing what you're created to do. You are created in the image of God. God makes sound. He's the voice. He's a creative God. You, my friends, can release the word of God and create something within an atmosphere that is conducive to the presence of the Father. You are an instrument. You have vocal cords. You're to make that sound. And the sound you make is not your regurgitating of, 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 of politics and all that garbage. What you're supposed to be regurgitating, reverie out of your belly is the word of God that hits your vocal cords and they begin to vibrate. Is anybody in this house right now? When your voice begins to vibrate when you come together corporately and we vibrate together with our voices and our instruments begin to strum something it becomes the symphony from heaven and God is pleased and then from a mighty sound of heaven it sounds like a rushing wind it's a spillover from heaven and heaven invades earth and he invades the situation we're in he invades our worship and when he does our voices begin to come into agreement not only with those on this earth but we agree with God in heaven and his word Word, for it's twice spoken. I preached that to you. God said it once, but when you say it is twice spoken, it's a blessing of the second spoken word, and it begins to infiltrate those around you. You need to learn to quit honking people off with the fly, with the vibrating of your voice that is not godly. You need to talk about God. You need to release God. You need to praise God. And when you come in here, you're running demons at the door. If you'll come a part of the symphony from heaven, somebody praise Him. If you can't let God vibrate your voice now if you can't let God vibrate your vocal cords now there'll be a day you will because the Bible says there's a day coming friends that every knee will bow and every tongue confess so if you can't praise him and acknowledge him now there'll be a day there'll be a day that you'll acknowledge him because his presence will come you will bow your knee sir, sir or ma'am your pride will go your flesh will crawl in the presence of God, and your voice will sing praises to him, whether you like it or not. So lift your voice right now and praise him. Father, we praise you right now. We acknowledge you. It's not about the sound. It's not about the generation. It's not about red book hymnals and sounds on the wall. What it is, Father, now is that I'm an instrument. I can praise you without all of that. I can praise you because I'm an instrument. Father God, I pray you strum my vocal cords right now because somebody needs to hear, somebody needs to hear my voice resonating peace right now. I need to speak love into somebody's life. I need to pray hot confidence. Let my voice begin to, uh, to, begin to, to vibrate about healing. Somebody needs to hear healing. They don't need to hear about the first doctor I go to yet. I first without telling them about Jesus. Somebody has a great losses. Somebody's being persecuted. They need to hear my instrument going off right now. I need to strum. My vocal cords need to vibrate the living word from my belly. Father God, right now, let me be an institution. Father God, to, to call forth the blessings from my temple. Father God, when I do this, po politics will line up. A nation will line up. If we'll humble ourselves and pray, healing comes to our land. And then those who bring demonic things to our nation will be exposed and destroyed. Father, when we expose it, it does nothing. But when you do, you clean house. You'll take a Babylonian spirit out. You'll move them completely out in a way that their music won't even be heard. And their calmness will be broken. Father, in the name of Jesus, let our eyes be on you and our voices vibrate your word Somebody praise him in this house. Wow! Wanted to give you an illustration that you may have seen at some of these, but we're not set up with our sound like used to be in the old church. If I had a, and I may do this next week or so, probably will. If I had a, a monitor here, and I would tell the sound to turn my voice up real loud. And in front of that monitor where my voice is, Al, you drop your ring. Where that voice is, 
whenever that vibration hits, all of a sudden my voice would cause that guitar to, to, to resonate. If I turned that guitar up and I would speak loud, my voice coming out of that monitor hitting the front of that acoustic guitar, them strings would start vibrating. They would begin to mock my voice. It's the same when God spoke to the world. God's voice spoke, and when he spoke, the world came into existence. God's word spoke, and all of a sudden, Jesus come on the scene. You see, Jesus is not the sav only the Savior. He is the living word of God. And when you speak about Jesus, something vibrates. And how, how many know, how many, that's why when you go speak about Jesus, devils manifest. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. You see, when you begin to walk in that anointing, and then when a church gets in agreement, and we learn to disagree about stupid stuff, and start agreeing on the one thing, and that's Jesus, all of a sudden, our testimony begins to shine, and somebody comes to the throne of grace and gets set free. Our voices are to be instruments. We are human instruments. When the sound from heaven comes forth, every person has a responsibility. You hear me today. I'm releasing this to you. So once I release it, it's on you. And the responsibility that you have today is you either resist the sound or you accept it. It's the only two choices you have. You react to that. You see, when the sound comes in, then you have to move on that. I'm thankful for the upper room and that they moved on the sound from heaven. But they didn't just sit, have a patty cake and have their own little parties. Prayer was possible, it was powerful, but listen what they done. They come out of there and it touched the world. They released the anointing. They went to prayer and on their way to prayer, that's when the, block, the, 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 the cripple was standing at the gate beautiful and guess what happened? They spoke. I don't have what you're wanting, but what I have I give unto you. Rise and walk. You see, he spoke. They spoke into that. But you know where they were going? Prayer. If I could release this to you today, I'm praying that you get a heart for prayer. That you get so on fire because you're hungry for the sound of heaven that you become that instrument for God because a generation needs to hear God. Now watch this as we get ready. God, according to Scripture, personified himself through Jesus. All God, all man on this earth. So Jesus is the manifestation of God in this earth. Not only that, but Jesus is the sound of God's voice in this earth. The Bible says he personified. That word person comes to us, and it can mean three words. It means person, it means persona, and it means personality. So what that means is this, if you break it down. Pro means this. It means to pass through. Sauna or sonic means sound. So person and personality is one who knows how to walk through. And when you walk through something, how many of you know to make a sound? You ever come through something and go, shoot, man. Man, I was lucky there. No, God had his angels around you, moron. Keep your eyes on heaven. Give God glory. He saved my life. He protected me. Show. Now listen to me. It's walking through. Some of you need to learn that the sound of heaven and the only thing that's going to teach you how to walk through something is know Jesus and get him into your life and quit asking for ungodly counsel and start working with the counsel of the Holy Spirit. And God will not only do it, your personality will be known in hell don't worry about it on this earth. Hell will look and say those people know how to not only move, but they know how to walk through. They have the personality of Jesus. How can you say that? Because my Bible tells me that every one of us are made in what? The image of the Father. And he knows how to pass through. Lift your hands. Father, I'm releasing that anointing this morning. Some folk don't know how to pass through. They don't understand who they are in Christ. Father God, they need to understand who Jesus is this morning. They need to understand that he is the son. He is a person. He is personified uh, a God on this earth. So that means he is the voice of God. The personage of the Holy Spirit also is the voice of God. So Father God, we stand now. Jesus is the one sound that people need to hear. We need to know how to pass through because you are the redemption through the blood of Jesus. You pass through. And Father God, because you have, we can become an overcomer in this earth. Somebody give him praise in this house. Come on, give him glory. You got to learn to pass through, man. I'm just moving through, man. Devil, get behind me. That's what Jesus told him. Stand thee behind me. I'm passing through. Says he left him for a season. He coming back. Goliath's got brothers. Now watch this. You sing that song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the... How sweet the... Amazing Grace, how sweet the... 
See, people don't even understand what that means. You understand what that sound is? Jesus. Why? Because he tells us. Amazing grace, how sweet Jesus is. Why? Because he saved a wretch like me. That's just not amazing grace, how sweet the sound. People don't even fall in love with the song. You got to fall in love with Jesus. You're singing about the grace because it's by his grace, unmerited favor, that he saved you. And the singer, John Newton, wrote it, and this is what he says. How amazing is your grace. How sweet the sound. Why? He references this. There is a heavenly sound that came into my life that saved me from the pits of hell. How many of you know people need to hear the sound of heaven so that they come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Give him praise in this house. Amazing grace. How sweet Jesus is. Sweet Jesus is. Because I'm saved. I don't know about you. Because I've heard the sound of heaven. Turn to Psalms 148 quickly and we're going to get ready to close. Yeah, right. Yeah, we are, really. Are you there? Psalms 148. If you're there, say, I am there. Come on. Cheeseburgers away. Chinese buffet. Sonic away. You ready? Psalms 148. Praise the Lord. What you're doing right there when you say that, you're bringing your flesh into submission to God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. No, say, praise the Lord. You see that song, I just want to praise the Lord. You see, when you praise him, suddenly you get vertical. As soon as I tell you right there, as soon as you've done that, you just went like this. A lot of you went. Because you understand that you're praising him. Why? Praise the Lord for the heavens. Praise him for uh, his heights. Praise him, uh, all the angels. Praise him and his hosts. Praise him, sun, moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you highest heavens, you waters above the heavens. Let him, or let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree. Spoken, a decree is spoken, shall not pass away. In other words, he fixed their bounds. In other words, everything is put in place. This earth revolves because of the voice of God. Everything is moving on this earth because he's spoken. The gravitational pole that holds you together. Everything, your body is held together because of the voice of God. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters in all deep. You lightnings, hell, fog and frost. You stormy winds fully fulfill his order. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all the cedars, beasts and all cattle, creepy things and flying birds, kings of the earth, all peoples. Listen to me, kings of the earth, all peoples, princes and all rulers and judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old and old men and young, children. Verse 13. Let them praise and exalt the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted, it's supreme. His glory and majesty are above all earth and heaven. He has lifted up a, thorn, a horn for his people, giving them power, prosperity, dignity, preeminence. For it's a song of praise for all his godly ones, for the children of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That word hallelujah is very universal. Anywhere in the world, you say hallelujah, people know what it means. Anywhere that I go around the world, say amen. Everybody knows what that means. Any language, they know what hallelujah and amen is. Particular cool about hallelujah is the ending of that is the A-H, ah. And the A-H talks about is making something known. Hallelujah sums it up. God sums it up. Whenever you begin to release hallelujah, so be it. It's said. Things begin to take place. It's a praise, an attitude of praise. It's a vertical hallelujah. And we find this sound takes place. Now you can go there, just listen to me for a few moments. And we're going to close. Genesis takes us to the sound of heaven. Genesis chapter 18, verse 10. Again, the Lord said, He's speaking again in Genesis chapter 18, verse 10. The voice of God begins to speak, and it says, The Lord said, I will surely return to you when the season comes round. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah was listening, and she heard. Somebody say she heard. She heard angels speak this. Immediately in Sarah's life, she heard the sound from heaven. 
But when she heard the sound from heaven, she did not hear it in her timing. She heard it in God's timing. When you learn to pray, you open yourselves up into agreement with heaven. When you learn to praise corporately, you set yourself up for the Holy Spirit and His voice to come into your midst. Because God's timing is for you at His time, not yours. And we find all of a sudden Sarah, the Bible said, or Sarai, became Sarah. In other words, the ah was put on her name. Ah. In other words, God was about to do something. And it was signified that way. Sarah was that God was about to change her name. God was about to change or release sound in her voice. So that when he hollered for Sarah, God was getting the glory and God was getting the praise. There was a sound, a sound, ah, God in her life. And the Bible said Sarah heard what they spoke. And the Bible said the tent door came open. Now what we find is that this tent door is very important. Because Sarah heard the opening of the tent. That's translated, soon as she heard that, she heard the opening of the dwelling place, the place of habitation. Now, I studied that out this week, and in the ancient text, you find something translated here. Sarah heard the opening of the tent or the dwelling place. That word tent is very important. The word tent in Hebrew means this. It means a dwelling place. It means basically the place that God stands. So we find Ale, which means tent. And it indicates that is the dwelling place of God or the dwelling place, get this, of divine information. So she was in a place. The Ah, God's glory, began to step in her life in his timing. And at first she laughed when God spoke, like many do. They make fun of the Holy Spirit. They're not interested in godly things. But you see, it's important that when we come in here, that it's just not a concert. It's not a religious setting. It's that we come in here to hear from God. When I come in here, I expect you to get healed. When I come in here, I'm expecting the lost to get saved. When I come in here, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting minds to be transformed. When I'm here, I'm expecting hurts, habits, and hang-ups to go by the side and disagreement and discord go out the door and God's heaven steps in this house. Sarah was there and the angels visited her. I got a sermon on angels. I may really set some time. But the Bible tells us in the Hebrew text that what it said when the, when the tent was open, she heard Shekinah is the way that's explained. And the opening of the portal into the divine realm came very open. And heaven began to pour out into that tent or the voice of God begin to surround it and in, in begin to infiltrate Sarah's life and you know the story so today I want you to get this in your heart that your praise has to be vertical your worship has to be vertical because you are caught up in the doldrums of your life some of you are in a routine and you do more griping than you praise some of you just wore out by the world some of you don't even know what to do because you're so consumed by COVID or you're so consumed by politics. And you, got, you have to understand that you have to be consumed by Him. And when you're consumed by all those things of the world, you don't pray. You know what happens? You complain. You watch more CNN, Fox News, News Word, all those things, and you begin to complain instead of praise. I promise you, if you begin to praise and the church begins to rise up, you know what the Bible says? Let God arise and what? The enemies be what? Scattered. And if the church will ever get a hold of that, and I thought, Lord, we'll put this map down here because what a good place to start is right here at Terre Haute, Indiana. Why not here? Why not now? Why not in your life? Why not break religion? Step into present. Why not let God do surgery on your heart? Why not let God take hatred out? Why not let God heal your bruised spirit? Why not let God deal, your, deal with your church mentality? And know that God needs a people who are vertical in their praise. Who are not consumed when they come in about themselves. Although that's important. But my consumption must be the portal of heaven. 
bow your head for a moment because I believe there's anointing today. I believe that God sent you messages. I believe God sent angels around you. I believe God wants to change your name and put awe at the end of that. I believe God wants to step in there and let God be known in your life. I believe that the promises God has for you is about to come to reality. I believe that God's bringing this word in because the Bible tells us that there suddenly was the calm from heaven. That's one translation. Aramatic, the Aramatic translation says, suddenly there was a calm from heaven and a sound of a violent wind. That word means there was a pause or there was peace that set in that upper room, in that prayer meeting. That means it's one who bears the peace was God. What that simply means, without me going further, is that the presence of God stepped into that prayer meeting. Let me ask you a question as you've got your head down. Think about this. How often are you in prayer and God steps in your meeting? How often when you pray does God actually, as the old timers say, give you kick, you get the chicken bumps or you start crying or you start weeping? How many of you have ever had the spirit of travail come on you? The only ones that I know in America today that know travail and know how to travail is those who birth babies. But how often you ever been in a prayer and your personal prayer and just start weeping for the lost or weeping because there's things in your life that need to come out? How often do you start weeping and ask God to forgive you because, Father God, I, I'm worried more about me than anybody else. How often do we cry before the Lord because people won't come to church with us and I don't want, I, it's no wonder they won't even want to ride in the same car with you. How often does the presence of God sit in your room so powerful that when you walk in, you got to just stop everything and just start throwing your hands up and glorify God? How often is your prayer closet in your house? You do have a place you pray in your home. How often, and I'm not talking about your car. I'm talking about do you have you have a place designated in your home, a couch, a chair, don't have to be fancy. A place that God habitates. And when you walk over there, you know he's there. How often do you take time to give him praise? Thank him for your wife or your husband or your health. You thank him for his word that's alive in your life. How often we stop for a moment and say, God, I'm trying to be everything, but I don't have strong prayer. When we don't have strong prayer, we don't see deliverances. We don't see healings. We don't see God. We see man-made religion. And we can manipulate it. God forgive us. How often do we address our disagreements in the throne of prayer? Or do we just say that's the way they are, that's the way it is, that's the way it's going to be? How often do we justify the non-agreement that sets in our lives in the houses of God? How often do we negate our heritage and our distinctive? We are Holy Ghost people. How long has it been since you prayed in the Holy Ghost? How long has it been since you praised God in the Holy Spirit? How long has it been that you just open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit just come through you and pray through you? Because you know your word says there's times you don't even know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. He'll speak through you. How often do we worry about what's on TV or the Internet or what's happening more than we worry about your presence? I'm speaking life to you today. I'm asking you to get yourself in the right place with God. It's time. I don't care how old you are here today. God wants to use you. And maybe things aren't working like they should. Because we're not where we need to be. Mother, lay hands on this soldier. He's a wounded soldier. A wounded warrior is in right here in my hand. Lord God, he said in this church because you got him here because we got something he needs. Lord God, let us not neglect those around us. This man is a godly man, and he fought for us to be here right now. I don't take this lightly, and I'm not doing this to embarrass him, but it proves a point to me today. Jesus died for you. Do you give him attention? Do you pray? I pray right now that my brother, Father God, be restored. I pray that you bless his mind and his body. I pray that you take away all the post-traumatic syndrome that sets in him. 
Father God, I pray how the enemy tries to destroy him and make him feel like that his life has been wasted or hurt and he's not been, going to be able to be used. I bind that spirit. Father, I pray for a total blessing over my wounded warrior. Father God, I pray for him often. God, I ask you to forgive me when, Father God, I think I got it bad. God, there's people who are searching for you and hungry for you. And I'm praying you touch this man of the military. He's a warrior. And God, healed up and ready, he'll be a warrior for you that hell will have to contend with. Because, Father God, he gave everything he's got. And I am humbled to have him in this congregation. I'm a military man. And I understand, but God, I don't understand at all. But I know one thing. God, I expect him to heal this man up because we need him. We need him in our body. Father God, I pray for the brokenness in this house. Break us again. That we see how important it is when pastor calls him to the altar to worship. Because when we're up here worshiping, there ain't nothing going on behind us. We need to understand our kids need Jesus. Our city needs Jesus. But most of all, we need his presence. Would you just lift your hands and ask God, can we invite the sound of heaven? Do we dare ask God to blow in you? God, can't do church like we did 30 years ago. Father, I'm not going to do church like we did last year. I'm hungry for you, Lord. I'm really hungry for you. I'm hungry for you because I'm tired of watching people come in and out of your churches never changing. Father God, I'm, I'm calling upon you to put a travail in our heart. Break us that we cry on the altars, that we run to the altars and pray, that we see this map in our broken, the brokenness of a nation that can only be fixed if we personally, Father God, humble ourselves. Father, if we turn from our wicked way and if we pray, Father God, I don't want any church services just that will tickle our flesh. I'm asking for my intercessors, which they've been right on, by the way. They sent me a note. They've been right on, right, with what God's telling me. We need the sound. It's hitting all through the churches. They're preaching these messages around. Because, Father God, I believe it's a word from the throne. You're desiring us to be very vertical. Forget about our pettiness. Father God, we are not to be divided in your house. We're to be united because you're Jesus. Allow us to have differences. It's okay as long as it doesn't bring sin in. We may not agree on everything, but I can tell you one thing. You hear me, devil, in this house. We can agree and will agree that Jesus Christ died on a cross, went to a borrowed tomb, and he rose from the dead for each one of us. And we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and Savior. Would you stand and lift your hands to the he to heaven this today and give him a hand clap of praise in this house. I didn't even touch this sermon at all. I didn't even get close to it. Come on, give him glory in here. Come on, give him a, a shout in here. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Shaka, 